at Acts chapter 27. Uh, I may have dealt with these thoughts before, I don't know, but uh, this is what the Lord's put on my heart anyway. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about this chapter, then I'm going to, I'm interested in two words, just two words out of this chapter. But uh, I'm going to talk just a minute, and then I'm going to give you a few things about these two words, and uh, we'll go. But you know the story, uh, it, Paul, Paul's headed to Rome, Paul's a prisoner, uh, and he's headed to Rome, he's, he's in stocks, and he's the first of the chapter, he's, he's there uh, taking him to Rome, and of course God told him that he had to go to Rome, and he is going to Rome, and he did go, and he preached at Rome, but, but in the first of this chapter, he's a prisoner. In fact, all the whole chapter, he's a prisoner, and, uh, and they get ready to sail, and Paul tells them that it's not good to sail. He said, uh, I've been, uh, I perceive it's not good to sail, and of course they wouldn't listen at him. The captain of the ship wouldn't listen at him. They sailed anyway, and of course you know the story. Uh, in verse 13, the wind began to blow. In verse 14, there rose a great storm, a great storm, a very tipped storm. You're, you're a Clyden, I think that's how you say that. Uh, this storm came, and a, a great storm, and the uh, and the wind uh, uh, caught the, the, the ship and tossed it to and fro. And so right now, they're, they're sailing when they shouldn't have so, sailed. They're in the middle of a storm. storm is coming. It's, it's a heavy storm. And they're tossed about. In fact, this storm starts here and goes all the way through the chapter. Keep that in your mind. All the way through the chapter. The, chap the storm don't end till the chapter ends and goes into chapter 28. So this whole story... The winds just blowing. They never cease. The rain's just coming down. The ship's just being tossed to and fro. The people are frightful. And everything looks a bad situation. All the way through this whole chapter here in verse 27. And then you come down and the Bible talks about they lightened the ship. They, the, these were professional sailors and they, they, they tried to even lighten the ship. They throwed a lot of good things away. A lot of good tackling away when the storm comes. Uh, you know, I thought about this. You know, sometimes when storms come in our life, if you ain't careful, you'll throw a lot of good stuff away that you didn't have to throw away. Amen. If you just went down to the bottom of the ship and got a hold of God. Amen. And at God's will, there's a lot of things we could have held on to and uh, saved. But uh, they showed, throwed a lot of stuff over. But verse 21, Paul goes down in the bottom of the ship and he begins to pray and talk to the Lord. And verse 22, he comes up and said, Now I exhort you to be of good cheer. For that shall no man loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whom I am and whose I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. Can you imagine how it felt when these, these sailors are scared to death and the winds is tossing? They doesn't look like it's over with. It looks like they ain't gonna, they've, they've done everything they can do to try to bring in control. The, the, sea, the winds just are blowing the ship everywhere. And uh, the, the, the winds are blowing, the rains is coming, the waves is beating against the ship. Paul comes up and says, be, be of good cheer. I believe God. Uh, you know, you ever had somebody like that? You're going through a storm, they come up and say, I oh, don't worry about it. God's going to take care of it. But can you imagine how they felt uh, in the midst of this? They probably looked at him and thought, man, you're crazy. <laughs> Amen. Because this, this is not under control. And then you come on down in verses number 27, 28. They sound out some, uh, some phantoms and find out they're so far away. And verse 29, fearing this, we should fall upon the rocks. They cast four anchors out and turn and wish for the day. And some of them even was going to jump ship. The Bible said they, they got in the little ships when they let them down, was going to get at them. And Paul said, verse 31, uh, uh, except these abide in the ship, they cannot be saved. And so the soldiers cut it off and they stayed with the ship. And then you come on down, you, you know the story, the wind just kept coming. They finally uh, just loosed everything and let her go, let her ride. And then in the closing chapters, the Bible said in verse 40, when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves into the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail of the wind and made toward shore, falling in, and falling into a place where two seas met. They ran the ship aground, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable, but the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. Here, they finally just pulled up the anchors and just let the storm do what it's going to do. And they end up, they end up where two ways met, crammed in there, and the ships begin to be bust up. Verse 42, And the soldiers canceled the, uh, to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. And But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose, commanded they should swim, uh, those that could swim, cast himself in the sea, get to land. The rest, some on boards, some on pieces of the, the ship. I like this phrase. And so it came to pass 
that they escaped all safe to land. So here's the storm. It's on through. It's a tremendous storm. They tried all kinds of things to, to, to do it. But Paul got a hold of God. God said, uh, you're not going to, nobody's going to lose their life. You're going to lose the ship. No man's going to lose life. In fact, in fact, in verses, uh, verse 34, he says, there's not a hair of your head that's going to fall. If you could count the hair on your head, uh, going through this sea and the storm and everything, I'm going to so protect you, not one hair is going to fall from your head. That's pretty good protection from the Lord. And God promised them, he gave them protection, and he done what he said. He brought them safe to shore. But you go back to verse number uh, 33, 34, 35. I'll read these verses. Verse 33, And while the day was coming on, Paul besought them all to take meat, saying, This day is the fourteenth day that you have tarried and continued fasting and have taken nothing. Wherefore, I pray you, take some meat, for this is for your health. For there shall not a hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread, gave thanks to God in presence of them all, and when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then were they all of good cheer. And they, all, uh, uh, they also took some meat. And we were in all in the ship, 200, three score, and 16 souls. If you'll notice in verses number 35, there's two words I want to talk about in verse 35. It says, when they had thus spoken, he took bread and he gave thanks. I want to use those two words, he gave thanks. He gave thanks. I got to thinking about this story. About, uh, and, and looking at this as I read that it just seemed like those two words just kind of stuck out at me and can you imagine all of these all of these situations going on Paul's uh, uh, on a board a ship they're in a storm uh, uh, and uh, he counsels the people to take some bread and they did and they took some bread and of course it's all over with when they get to shore but in the middle of everything's going on Paul took time to give thanks and I don't talk about that just for a few minutes on giving thanks. I thought about, first of all, the fact that Paul just gave thanks. It just said in that verse, and gave thanks. In other words, it said Paul just stopped and took the time uh, to give thanks uh, for the bread that he was holding, bowed his head and asked the blessing over the bread. Can you imagine? Think about this. In the midst of all the things that's going on, here's Paul standing up over the loaf of bread, giving thanks to God. The winds is blowing, storms on, everybody's fearful. But in the midst of all of it, he took time to give thanks. A grateful heart is a good heart. Amen. Uh, one writer said, in all of your learning, in all of your learning, no matter what you're learning, what you're studying, said in all of your learning, learn to give thanks. Amen? Learn to give thanks. And Paul, uh, people, you know, who, who don't know how to give thanks have a character problem, really. They, they don't really know how to give thanks. But most successful lives comes from the attitude of giving thanks. You remember in Luke chapter 17, the Bible talks about there was 10 lepers and they came and they met the Lord and, my, and they, they asked the Lord for help and God told them to go down to the priest and all 10 of them turned to go to the priest. And the Bible said when they went, they recognized that they was clean and one of them turned back. All 10 of them, uh, Brother Ray, was, uh, was clean but only one turned back and he came back and he bowed and gave thanks. You know what God's question was? Where's the nine? Where's the rest of them? They had the same blessing. They had the same touch. They had the same cleansing. But where they are they? They did not take the time just to come back and give thanks. But one out of that percentage came back and took the time to give thanks. And I'm going to tell you what, we are in an unthankful world today where people just don't really take the time to be thankful. Now, I've said this before so many times, and, and, and I don't mean to be repetitious, but uh, 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 the generation that we have today, the younger generation especially, they know nothing about giving thanks uh, and expressing an attitude of thanks. I was raised, and you know this, I was raised, uh, you open the door for people. You open the door for ladies, you open the door for old people. And uh, so when I leave, y'all want to open the door for me? I'm old, amen. But, but anyway, we open the door for old people, you open the door uh, uh, for different ones, and you say, thank you and you say yes ma'am and no ma'am uh, uh, yes sir no sir we was raised that way uh, and, and it was just a, a, a normal thing and, and and I go to the post office all the time and and I and most of the time I open my door be somebody coming through you open my door for them most of the time it's older people some middle aged people and most of them say thank you I open the door the other day for a lady and she said thank you sir she said you don't find too many gentlemen no more and, and, but, but here a while back and a young girl came in just at uh, about 20 21 two years old and 
she came in, I opened the door for her. She had a little box in her hand. I opened the door for her. She went in. She never said a word. Looked at me like, what are you doing? Uh, and so when she went on in there, and I went out, uh, Christian, I went out toward my car, and, you know, I, I got a mean streak in me, uh, and I went back in. Uh, and, I, and right when I got back in, I said, thank you for letting me open the door for you. I really appreciate it. Uh, she turned and looked at me like you're an idiot, you know. Uh, uh, but I tell you, I just want to let her know that you ought to express some kind of thanksgiving. You ought to take time to give thanks. And Paul took the time to give thanks unto God in the midst of that situation. And so Paul gave thanks. It said when he had thus spoken, he gave, he took bread and gave thanks. Then let me say something there. Not only did Paul just give thanks, but Paul gave thanks in spite of circumstances that he was in. Can you imagine stopping giving thanks in the middle of the situation that he was in? Most of us wouldn't even think about eating, much less giving thanks, uh, uh, my friend. Just, But he took the time in the middle of these circumstances. Paul was a prisoner on board a ship. He was in a storm. He was misunderstood by everybody on the ship. And Paul still took the time in the midst of those trying circumstances when he was facing death just as much as everybody else was facing death. He was in a dangerous situation just like everybody else was, but in the midst of those circumstances, he took time to give thanks. Amen. I'm going to tell you what, I don't care what circumstance you're going through, I don't care what circumstances is going on in your life, there's something you can stop and be thankful for, I don't care what you're going through. Amen? You say, well, I got, I'm sick. Well, you can be thankful, my friend, that you ain't dead. Amen? Uh, you can always be, you say, I don't have a whole lot to eat. Be thankful for what you got. Uh, be thankful for what God has blessed you with. There's always something. Uh, I don't care what your circumstances is, there's always something that in, in spite of the circumstances you're going on that you can take time to give thanks. Paul, Paul over in the, the scripture in the book of Philippians, you remember Paul was talking about all the things he was going through and he said, yet none of these things move me. Yet. I count it all, my friend, that the gospel is being preached. You remember in 2 Corinthians when Paul, had, he had the thorn in the flesh and all of a sudden he said, God move it, God move it, God move it and God would not move that thorn in his flesh, whatever it was. Yet. He said, I'll give you grace and uh, my grace will be sufficient and Paul turns around and says, most gladly then well, I rejoice and be thankful for what God has allowed me to come in my life. Most of us, you know, when we have trying circumstances, we become, we become professional complainers. <laughs> Amen. Help me out now. We, you know, boy, you talking about, I mean, you can just see some folks when they come in the door. You know something's wrong. And you know, they got the pooch mouth, you know. You can just look at them. And of course, there's some people you don't ask if they're okay because they're going to tell you. Amen. That, uh, they're just uh, true. You learn people like that. Amen. I got a preacher friend. And when he calls, I don't ask him. I just, I just talk, let him talk and roll around. Because if you ask him how he's doing, 45 minutes later, you'll finally get off the phone. Amen. Uh, they're just people like that. But I'm okay. I know circumstances come. And I know they hit us hard. But I'm going to tell you, right in the midst of every bit of it, you can find something to be thankful for in the midst of all your trying circumstances. Can you imagine, Paul? Most of us, if we'd have been in this storm, amen, we wouldn't have been setting up giving thanks. I mean, can you imagine? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just crazy like this. But uh, Ray, can, I, can you imagine me and you out in a boat, and we're going to go fishing, and, and, and every time we practice a little picnic, you know, and, and you can do that now since you're retired. But, but, you know, we got a little boat. We're out there fishing, and the storm comes, and, and, the, and the, the boats are going every which way. The rain's just coming down. The wind's just blowing. The tackles are blowing out. And all of a sudden, I stand up and, and say, well, let's eat. <laughs> Let's eat this picnic. Brother Ray say, eat a picnic, nothing. We're about to go under. And the storm winds are blowing. What do you mean? Eat. And I said, well, let's eat. We get up and I say, thank you, Lord. And I start praising him and thanking him. Brother Ray say, man, this storm's messed him up. But I tell you, in the midst of all the trying circumstances, great circumstances, Paul took time to give thanks unto God for what was going on. I don't care what circumstances you are. I don't care how sick you are. I don't care how depressed you are. Somewhere, somehow, if you look around, you can find something to be thankful for. Amen. Amen. <laughs> my, uh, me and my wife, we cut up all the time, act crazy and carry on. And, and my daughter-in-law told us the other night, she said, y'all the craziest two we, I ever seen. She said, we just cut up and carry on. And my, we, here a while back, there was a, a sister there, there was a roach bug. If you, you know, you said everybody don't have roaches. Well, we had one. 
And where it come from, she keeps all that stuff, you know. But there's a road book come through there. And she was just a rare, she just fussing. She said, I cannot believe we've had this place sprayed. And, 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 and you always see the nice side of her. She comes in glued sometimes. And, and, and she said, I, 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 I can't believe after all that stuff. And we got a road book in the house. And she said, what about that? I said, yeah, we could have had two. But thank God we just got one. <laughs> Uh, it went over like a lead balloon too to house, buddy. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes, uh, but it's according to the way you look at things, uh, whether you're going to just bow down in the circumstances or find something to give thanks for. Sure. Amen? And so Paul gave thanks. Paul gave thanks in spite of the circumstances. Then, then look at this verse. Uh, uh, Paul gave thanks to God. Look in, look in verses number uh, 35 again. He said, And when he had thus spoken, he took bread, and he gave thanks to God, in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he, began, he gave thanks to God. <laughs> Amen. He bowed his head in the midst of all the things that's going on, took out one little loaf of bread, and gave thanks to God for it. I'm going to tell you what. I tell you, God's our real source of blessings. <laughs> if you're going to thank God for anything, you're going to be thankful for anything, first of all, you better thank God. God's the one that allowed you to be who you are and what you are and have what you are. Somebody said, I worked and I worked all my life and I've I done this and accomplished that. I'm going to tell you, it was God that gave you the ability. It was God that gave you the sense to work and God gave you the ability and the talent to do what you do. You owe everything you've got to God. And Paul didn't take credit for himself. He didn't, my friend, say, thank God for those that put all this on me. He took time in the midst of all them to thank God for what God had blessed him with. I believe we're thanking God for that promise that he gave him. Nothing's going to perish. <laughs> Nobody's going to lose a hair on your head. He took that bread and thanked God in the midst of everybody. He thanked the Lord. My friend, you know, God is the one who ought to be thankful for everything. The Bible said, in, where is it in uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians? Uh, uh, he said, in everything, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God. God said it's the will of God in everything. That means good or bad. Up or down, God said, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God. And he gave thanks to God. He gave thanks to the Lord. We was coming out of, we was coming out of uh, Missouri uh, a few weeks ago, and, and uh, me and my wife was uh, headed back to the house, and we was coming down the road, and, and, uh, and, and our anniversary was about that time, and we'd been married 48 years, and, and, and we was talking about that and everything, and, and we was coming, back, coming down the road and coming off the mountain, uh, uh, down through there and, 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 and we got quiet and I got to thinking I got to thinking about this I got to think about this brother Ray and I'm riding down the road in that old truck and, and I got to thinking in case she's on her iPad and we're just riding quiet but I got to thinking about I thought man 48 years uh, that me and her had been together and then we, we worked under brother Larry Wells for three years uh, and after we'd been married three years we stepped out by faith and took our little uh, own little church and, and we quit our jobs and went full time for the Lord and I got to think about it 45 years 45 years ago we stepped out by faith and we've been full time and my friend to the Lord and the Lord I got think about how good the Lord had took care of us and, and God has blessed us and, and God has helped us and, and I, I preached all over this country and God's opened doors for me and I'm not bragging I'm just telling you what God done and I got thinking about that how all the places I preached and, and I got thinking about all the things that happened and how God had took care of us at good times and bad times and I'm coming off a mountain and all of a sudden I, I said Woo! and she liked to jump out of the truck she said what's wrong with you I said I just got to thinking how God has been good to us. And we owe him thanks. We owe God thanks. Everything we have, everything we do, all of our company, we owe it to God. Our togetherness, we owe it to God. She's a crying, I'm a crying. We're having a spell. Why? We was giving thanks to God for what God has done for us. We owe him the thanks of God. Thank God I owe him thanks for saving me. Man, I ain't got over that yet. <laughs> Just the fact that God saved me by His grace. Called me to preach. Amen. Used me every once in a while. Amen. Preaching a meeting a while back. A lady walked up to me. She said, do you remember me? I said, no, ma'am. And uh, the Pickens County Camp meeting where they was just at, I preached that thing for about four times. But one of them, in one of those meetings, I preached it, and she got saved in that meeting. And I, I didn't recognize her. And she said, you don't recognize me? And I said, no, ma'am. And here she was. She had a husband, had three kids. Uh, and she looked at me, and she said, you remember, I was just a teenager. 
I was just a teenager, and you preached the Pickens County Cow meeting uh, and said, I got saved. Uh, honey, you'll preach it that night. Uh, and I looked at her and I said, Well, I'm glad you got saved, but you're sure making me feel old. Uh, married and three young ones uh, and my family. But you know what? I left rejoicing. I left rejoicing. I thought, Man, God helped us and God used us and worked to us to preach the gospel. Get somebody to say, Hey, I owe everything. Everything I have. Everything I hope to be. Oh, it's a God. Thank God for His blessings uh, on me. And his goodness and his mercy. Amen. Oh, recognize all of the thanks must come from God, must go to God. Amen. <laughs> Let me say something else about this chapter. Paul gave thanks for what he had. The Bible said in verse 35, and when he had spoken, he took bread. <laughs> you remember they lightened the load over in the first chapter, throw all the good stuff away. I don't read whether there's any T bone steaks in there, no sirloins, no ham. Amen. When he no pen station sandwiches, amen. I mean they were they, they all he had evidently was a bread. And when this has happened, they gave thanks for it. They threw the wheat and the meal overboard. And this was the thanksgiving offering for what they had. They had a loaf of bread. Said, you ain't eating 14 days. Take this and eat it. And by friend, he didn't have a lot of other stuff to go with it. But he had a loaf of bread and he gave thanks for what he had. I'm going to tell you what you ought to give thanks for what you got. Amen. Thank God. Even though it wasn't much, he thanked God for it. I'm going to tell you, my friend Paul gave thanks for what he had, and he didn't complain over what he didn't have. But you know, some people can't be thankful for what they got for always wanting what somebody else has got. <laughs> Amen. They want what somebody else has got. They want this, they want that. Amen. And the young preacher come up the other day, and he said, Brother Gustin, he said, God's blessed you. And I'm just telling you what he said. He said, the Lord's blessed you and everything. And he said, man, I want all that. Uh, and I said, well, I ain't got nothing. Uh, he said, well, you got a ministry? And he said, you, you got a truck and this and that. And I looked at it and he said, you got a home? I said, well, listen, you can get a home too. Pay for it. He said, I said, go to work, go to preach and do something. I said, listen, just live for God and serve God. I said, you're just getting started. You know, that's the way kids is. They want everything mom and daddy's got. They've been married 40 years and they want everything mom and daddy's got now. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. That's right, brother. I had a wedding a while back and, and I was tech canceling this little old couple. And they, they, they was already, they was already in debt way up yonder. Had bought a new house, a new car, a new uh, truck, uh, had a boat, full, they had everything, old on everything. And I looked at them, and they said, Well, our mom and dad's got all this, and we won't, we're happy with all this. I said, No, you ain't happy, you got to work, you can't even miss a day of work. <laughs> I said, When me and Kay got married, we had a mattress in the floor. Our air conditioning was a fan at the bottom of the mattress, blowed across it. So that was our air conditioning. Amen, it was. Went to the dollar store and bought them old black sheets and Kay fixed them, put them over a rod. We had black sheets for curtains. We was happy. Amen. Sure. Had to go to the laundromat to wash the clothes. Boy, that messes these young folks up now. Don't they don't go to the laundromat, they bring them in your house. <laughs> Amen. Come on now, help me out. <laughs> I said, we worked and, and worked all year and when we got our income tax, we bought us a washing machine. Still had to go do the drying at the club. And then we, we gave and worked our way up. And we're thankful for what we have. Sure. Yeah. Amen. In fact, some of you, if you go back, some of them days when you first got married, y'all know something about this back there, honeymooners back there. Uh, 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 when you first got married, my friend, you are just happy with each other and you are happy with what you had. Now you can't be happy with each other and you can't be happy with what you had. You want what they got and what they got and you want more and you want more. I tell you what, Paul was just thankful for what God had allowed him to have. Amen. He was just thankful for it. <laughs> Wasn't much, but he is thankful for it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thankful for what we have. When we, you know what? If you're thankful for what you got, you can expect more blessings to come your way. Amen. <laughs> Me and Kay get to talk about it sometimes. We, we go back and talk about all how the things that we come through when we started back in the, back in the early 70s. And we, when we started, we, we talk about that sometimes. We ride down the road, talk to the three hours about, you know, when we first got married and this. And, hey, we had a 56 Ford. We first got married, Christian. We had a 56 Ford. And <laughs> had glad, glass pack mothers on it. You let them all, we'd pull up in the church and let them all go, bow, 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 bow. Pull in the churchyard. Amen. 
And uh, I had one suit coat, one little suit coat. When then I didn't have Goodwills in, they had some other kind of stores. Janet, you might remember what they are. I can't even remember the name of them, but them, them old stores back in there. And, and I give I give five dollars for a little coat. Kate bought a little dress. And they were preached wore the same coat. <laughs> I preached a meeting five nights wore the same coat. That's all I had. She wore the same dress. All she had and had a hole inside of it. She saw her sweater covered up. But we was happy. Amen. We'd ride down that fifth six forward. Had a light switch. <laughs> We'd turn the light switch on. On the heater till we sweated and we'd cut it off till we froze and we'd turn it back on that's just man we was happy run up and down the road that old fish six forward on them goodwill clothes and preach and sweat and have a good time I'd go home Kate wash everything up we'd put it back on the next day go again I'm talking about you talking about good days uh, you talking about blessed days uh, couldn't have no meat just eat camel soup I'm going to tell you what I thank God for what he had then and I thank it now and God has blessed us uh, because we've always been thankful for what we had from God you will learn to be thankful for what you have. Quit worrying about what everybody else has got. Amen. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. Uh, that little old lad, you know that lad had five loads, two fishes? You remember that? Yeah. And the disciples said, said uh, Jesus said, give them to eat. They said, well, you got 200 pennies. If we went to town, now they had the money. They said, if we went to town, bought 200 pennies worth of bread. What was that amongst the many? It wasn't feeding nobody. Jesus said, what do you got? He said, well, there's a lad here. Got five loads, two fishes. Jesus said, that's enough. <laughs> when you been like been there that day when Jesus took him five loaves two fish and began to bless he looked up to heaven and gave thanks for it started passing it out five thousand plus women and children fed they took up twelve baskets full you know why hey, they gave what he had and Jesus was thankful to take what they had and bless it God can bless what you got more than what you want sure. yeah. amen, <laughs> amen. amen. so Paul was thankful for what he had let me show you something else verse 35 the Bible said when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks in the press to God in the presence of them all. Paul gave thanks in public. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's good. <laughs> Amen. He wouldn't show as a testimony for God. How he wasn't showing off. He is thankful for that loaf of bread. He is thankful for what he had. And in public, he didn't run off some word hide. <laughs> he didn't say, Well, we'll eat this old loaf of bread and see how it's far to go. It's all we got. Come on now, help me out. Amen. <laughs> Sounds like Baptists, don't it? It's all we got. Amen. But you know what? He was thankful. He was thankful. This come from a grateful heart. And my friend, this public prayer of thanks, my friend, it came from his heart. And he was thankful. And he let everybody know in public he was thankful. You know, Paul said in, in the book of Acts, you know what Paul said in the middle of that Sanhedrin? Those that had hated him. Those that had beat him. Those that misunderstood him. They looked at him and said, Paul, you got anything to say? <laughs> he said, I thank myself happy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was rolling on the Damascus road with a great light shining. Yeah. And he told about getting saved. He told about God called him and put him in ministry. Right. And he stood there in the midst of all of his enemies and just thanked God. Right in the middle of that public crowd. He just thanked God. Thank you know, you need to thank God in the public. Good. The public needs to hear. Hey, they hear enough complaining out of Baptists. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I, I, uh, I've told this before, but I remember years ago they had, was had a meeting. There's a lady sitting there on the third row, and she stood up and testified. They had a testimony meeting. You know, a lot of people don't know what a testimony meeting is. You know, sometimes you say, well, I'm going to have a testimony meeting. Somebody get up and say, well, I've got a prayer request. You know, you just want to say, this ain't prayer request. Sit down. You know. Or they'll get up and say, I'll tell you what, I'm hurting over here. And, and uh, can't hardly move, and I'm going I'm hurt down here. Just can't hardly go. And the devils are fighting. We ain't wanting a complaint service. We want a testimony yeah, service. Sure. A testimony service is bragging on the Lord, yeah. exalting Him, yeah. magnifying the goodness of God. Yeah. But this woman got up. She had a complaint. She ever since I've been saved, said I've had it so hard. Said ever since I've been trying to live for God, said the devil fall. I just have so much trouble, have all kinds. I just struggle along and 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 just killed the killed the meeting, you know, and and went on and preached and when got through preaching, he gave the invitation, and that was back in the day when people would go back to people. Now this really happened, and this lady that had complained so much, she went back to this young man, standing back that was lost, and she said, "Young man, won't you come and get what we got?" And he said, "Boy, well, it's killing you. Why would I want it?" And I'm afraid that's why people don't want to come to church. They don't want to get saved. They don't want what we got. Because we're such complainers. 
We complain if you go past 12 o'clock. <laughs> you can go to the ball game to go four innings and you're still hollering. Amen. Come on now, help me out. <laughs> go somewhere in the world and, you know, I wish they lasted longer. Come to church with God. Can you think when you get to rest it and you're thinking, man, I'll tell you what, that preacher preached forever. We ought to thank God you got a preacher. Yeah, amen. God, thank God we got one something to say. Yeah, amen. amen. If singers hadn't sung so long, if this hadn't happened, and well, I'm trying to live for God, I'm trying to, hey, you think the world wants what we got? We ought to be the happiest people in the world. We ought to say, thank God we got to go to church today. Thank God we heard the singing and heard the preaching, heard the teaching. We got to see everybody else. Y'all just thank God you got a church to come to. That believes God and loves God. Y'all have let people know out there in public. Let your kindred know and your friend know. My friend, you. You are thankful. You are thankful in public. Amen? Public. And asking God. I, I, I've told this probably before. I've told everything I know. But anyway, this, past, this pastor had a, had a revival. And he had this evangelist come. This, this happened over in Carolina. He had an evangelist come preach for him. And he went out to breakfast the first morning. And he brought the breakfast and set it down. And the pastor, he eats there all the time. He breakfasts there every day. And uh, Sister Danny, he, he told that evangelist, he said, uh, he said, brother said, I don't never just make a deal, big deal about blessings and everything. He said, out in public, everything, people sitting in here and everything. He said, I just bow my head real quick and say, you know, in my own under my breath, I just say thank you and, and go on. He said, if that's okay, that evangelist said, well, that's okay with me. And and so the the pastor bowed his head and just said a quick little thank you. And the evangelist bowed his head and he sat there and all of a sudden he said, Woo! Glory! Right out loud. And he looked at the pastor. He said, I'm sorry, I couldn't help it. I just got to think about these good eggs and this good gravy. And it's good. I just couldn't help it. He just done it on purpose. Uh, amen. He said, embarrass that guy. I tell you what, the world hollers what they want. They'll sit across that table and cuss and curl. You ought to thank God and praise his name in public uh, and let them know uh, you're a child of the king. Amen. 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 I, said, I go to McDonald's and eat breakfast. Used to go to Hardy's and they got a bad grade so I moved over. <laughs> they did. When you go in there and there's a D on the wall instead of A, you... But anyway, I sit in McDonald's and eating, and I always take my Bible, take a book in the Bible. I go to McDonald's, get the same breakfast, same coffee. I sit down there, and I, I'm usually in McDonald's an hour or so. And I sit there and read and everything. And I sit in there, I sit in there, and, and, and actually, but the Christian, I forgot where I was at. I really did. I, I just sat in there, and I was just so, I'd eat my breakfast, and I was sipping my coffee, and I got so engulfed in this chapter that I was looking at. I got so engulfed, I forgot where I was at. I thought I was home in my study, I guess. And I sat there, and all of a sudden, I said, Woo! I kid, I thought, man, that's good. And, and, and I was talking to myself. And this old man come across to there. And he said, Preacher, he said, I don't know what you're reading, but it must be good. Uh, so I heard you holler, Amen, all the way across the McDonald's. I said, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, but I said, I got something good in here, and I couldn't help it. No, Everybody in knows, her, knows who I am, and I'm a preacher. And I know they know if I get happy, I'm going to let her rip. <laughs> uh, in public. Some people afraid they, they don't even bear to take their Bible in public. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Come on now, help me. And so Paul gave thanks in public. And then, let me say this, Paul gave thanks and it touched, it touched others. Look, look in verse 35 and 36. He said he gave thanks to, uh, to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. And they, then were they all of good cheer. And they also took some meat. You know what? His thankfulness rubbed off on the others. And they began to thankful. They began to do they begin to eat. They begin to do something. Amen. You know what? Your thankfulness, it, it brought a cheerful heart to others. Amen. It brought a cheerful heart. It brought motivation to others, faith to others. They all begin to eat. And he, by him giving thanks, he encouraged the others. I was telling, the, I was telling somebody about this. I don't remember who I was telling. Somebody around here. Maybe it was, it was a sound man up there. He's hit on me. I was telling him before church, this past Saturday and Sunday, this pastor called me a few months ago, and he was going to do a, uh, uh, what I call that? Festival. He was going to have a big festival on Saturday and Sunday. They're going to start at 12 o'clock on Saturday and go all day long until till dark. And then Sunday we started at 10, and it's going to go all day long again. And they did. 
They started ten o'clock on or twelve o'clock on Saturday, and they had a quartet there. He said the quartet, and they had they had all these stuff, you know. They they had a tent set up down there. They was cooking catfish and hush puppies and French fries, and you could get that all you wanted. Go down to the tent and eat. They had all these uh, little tents set up, booths or whatever you want to call it. They had all kinds of games. It looked like a fire. I mean, they had all kinds of games and sitting around. And I'm not being critical. I'm just telling you what it was. And they had uh, they had the, the health department there. You get a free flu shot. I mean, they had everything. I mean, big old thing. And right in the middle, they had this platform. And the singers were singing on that platform. They had about 50 chairs sitting out in front of them. There was nobody sitting in them chairs. Everybody's playing, eating, playing, having a big time. And them singers up there singing. I'm sitting on the platform with them. They're just up there singing away. And I'm looking around. Ain't nobody paying these people no attention. Then it hit me. I got to preach. And so they sang 45 minutes. And then at 1 o'clock, I preached. I walked up. They didn't have a platform or a pulpit. I walked up and I laid my Bible on that lady's uh, little piano thing there. Uh, and, and I laid it on there and had that mic. And I started preaching. And there was nobody in the seats. Everybody was playing, laughing, having a good time, eating catfish. And I'm standing up there all by myself preaching. <laughs> you think that ain't fun? Even the singers that I sat with went down and got something to eat. I told them. I said, I sat with y'all and y'all left me. Can you imagine? I'm standing up there and honestly. I'm standing up there with my Bible. I'm just preaching away. Hey, ain't nobody paying no attention to me. And I'm preaching. I preached about 35 minutes. You know what I've done? I've always preached on the radio. So I zeroed in on the mic just like I was on the radio. And I just stood there and preached that microphone like it's going out on the radio. And I survived. I got through to close my Bible up, started down off that little old platform they had. And I was going to go put my Bible up and go get me something to eat. It's like as I come off that platform, had my Bible and headed to the car, a little boy about 12 years old, about that high, he heard, hey, preacher. I turned around, I said, yeah, and he's coming right at me. He said, you've done a good job. He said, I enjoyed that. I said, come here, boy, let me hug your leg, amen. I said, man, thank you, God. I said, Mr. Devil, did you hear that? It wasn't in vain. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes, uh, you know what he did? He encouraged me. Uh, when I went down to eat, he came by. And I said, come here, son. I said, I'm going to hug your neck again. I said, you was a blessing. This old preacher, I needed those kind of words. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what, you ought to be thankful in public because somebody may need some kind words. Uh, somebody may be in the valley and need to be brought up. Somebody may be going through a trial and need to know that God's still on the throne. Uh, you ought to be thankful in public and let the world know uh, that God is still God and God is still good be thankful to God that he might touch the life of others uh, I've seen break, meetings break out because other people get, was thankful I sit at the house the other day I get up early and, and uh, I usually that's usually from the time I do a little reading praying in the mornings and I was sitting at the house and sitting on the couch and I'd read two or three chapters and laid my Bible over there and sitting there drank a cup of coffee. And the Holy Ghost impressed me to send a text to this certain guy down in Alabama. So I just got my phone. I sent the text. I just said, I'm thinking about you. Praying for you today. Hope you have a wonderful day. I sent it. He come back and a little bit. All he said was thanks. That's all he said, thanks. I was preaching in the meeting and he came. He drove up to the meeting. He got up and testified. He said, Brother Goodson don't know this. But he said, I was headed to surgery. And he said, I was scared to death. I was a nervous wreck. And said, my phone went off. I was still in my room, fixed the head of surgery. He said, my phone went off. said, I picked it up. And said, it was from Brother Goodson. said, all it said in there was, was thinking about you. Praying for you today. Hope you have a good day. He said, I closed that up. He said, told that doctor, said, I'm ready to go. Take me on in. Somebody's touching heaven for me. I tell you what, you don't never know. It may be a text. It may be a card. It may be a kind word. But somebody can be touched with your thankfulness. God, give us a thankful heart. Enter in his gates with thanksgiving. Psalm said, enter in his presence with thanksgiving. And everything give thanks unto the Lord. For this is the will of God. We read another verse in Ephesians. He said, Speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making metal in your heart, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ain't nothing you can't give thanks about. Everything we have, we can give thanks to God. Amen? Paul gave thanks. You know, you're, you're, you know, there are just some people, just to be honest with you, there are just some people, they just, I just don't believe they know how to do it. They just choke to death, say thank you. 
Come on now, help me out. <laughs> it just, they, they choke it out before they get it out. Right. Amen? Amen? Come on now. <laughs> he gave thanks. He gave thanks in spite of circumstances. He gave thanks to God. He gave thanks for what he had. He gave thanks in public. He gave thanks that it touched the lives of others. Amen. You know what I say? I said we ought to pray and ask God to give us a thankful heart. Amen. Thankful words. See, the Bible said out of the bottom of the heart, mouth speaking. So if you get a thankful heart, you know what it's going to do? It's going to come out of your words. Huh? Amen. It's going to come out of your words. It's going to come out and express it to everybody else. I ought to give God, you know, Get away from that old complaining spirit. Here's a good thing. Say, I like you. Ever see people say, Boy, I really like I really like our preacher's wife, but you just killed it. <laughs> I don't care what good you say about her, <laughs> but killed it. Yeah. Amen? Yes, sir. Why can't we just be thankful and not not go no farther? Amen. Amen. Just thanks for this. Get up on Sunday morning. That's right. Or be thankful you got a church to come to. I'm going to tell you, I travel all the time. There ain't many churches like this around. I'm just telling you that. I'm telling you that there ain't many. There ain't many. That just worship God and believes God and have a good time, loves everybody, helps people, good preachers, good people. You just don't find that everywhere. I preached the other Sunday morning, 12 people. Two of them was me and Kay. Pastor met me at the car, Christian. Pastor met me in the car. I got out of the car and he met me in the parking lot. He said, Brother Goodson, <laughs> he said, there ain't going to be many people here. I don't know how many's going to be here. But he said, said uh, you know, and he's just gripping and groaning, you know. And the Sunday before that, I preached for this guy. He met me after I got out of the car before I get in church. He met me. He said, Brother Goodson, said, we ain't going to have about 60 here. So we got people gone, people traveling, this, that, you know, got sick. Said, we ain't going to have about 60 people here. Said, I, you know, I, 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 I hate for you to come up here and just preach that. And I looked at him and I said, brother, I said, did you think, we, did you say we was going to have 60 here today? He said, yeah. I said, well, let's get in there and go to meeting with 60. And quit worrying about the empty pews. I said, don't look at empty pews. Look at the people that's in the pew and go to meeting and be thankful. Somebody come to hear you preach. Just get in here and have a good time and worship God. Amen. Have a good time. Two or three are gathered together in my name. <laughs> One preacher called me. He said, well, how'd you make it over at that church last Sunday? I said, well, they had, they had uh, 10 and uh, 12 or something like that. And I, he said, well, how'd it go? I said, I preached like there's 500. I said, I just preach one way. If it's 500, if it's two, I'm going to dump the whole load and go to the house. Amen. You ought to be thankful for your husband, your wife. Amen. You ought to be thankful for your children, your parents. You ought to be thankful for what you got. You know what? You could really change your whole home life, church life, work life. If you just get a thankful heart. I don't care what your kids have done to you. They can break your heart. My kids broke my heart. And I'm thankful for both of them. Thankful for them grand young. <laughs> Old Whitney's six five. I had to look up to him. I looked at him the other day. And I was out there talking to him and was doing some stuff. I started to leave and I said, Hey, I got one more thing to say. He said, What's that? I said, I love you. I'm glad you're my boy. I love you. <laughs> you know what he did, Brett Tillick? This is, I'm telling you, you call him. He said, I got one more thing to say, Daddy. I said, What? He said, Give me a hug. <laughs> We stood under the front yard and just hugged each other. You know what? I don't care what they've done, how bad shape they've been, how they broke your heart. You ought to be thankful you just got kids. <laughs> Amen? I'm talking about church. We need to get a thankful heart and ask God to put one in our heart. Amen? Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.